Hello, I'm Richard the Dungeon Crawler. Today we're going to continue our discussion talking about the Palladium Robotech books. Today I have something a little bit special. We're going to discuss my favorite rule set called the Invid Invasion. So if you want to see why I rate this setting so high, then step inside my dungeon. I'm working on a Robotech Palladium Combat Guide, so if you want to help support the channel, please just make sure you're subscribed, and this will help me bring new Robotech content to our community. Why is Invid Invasion my favorite Palladium role-playing game book? Partly because of my love of the third series of Robotech, which is called New Generation. Previously, I discussed how Robotech brought me into Japanese animation. At the start of the second series, called Robotech Masters, the story is progressed. The story follows around a new generation of Robotech warriors called the Armies of the Southern Cross. Overall, I really wasn't too impressed with the series. It had some cool mecha, but it just really wasn't my thing. The third series is called New Generation, and I thought it's amazing. It takes place after the Robotech Masters were defeated. A new alien force called the Invid attack Earth. Yes, we've heard this before, but what makes this different is it takes place during the alien occupation. The anime follows a group of freedom fighters trying to liberate the Earth from the evil Invid. It's a group of diverse people all trying to work together and at the same time fight off alien forces. Think of the A-Team but with transformable mecha. Sorry for this quick summary of Robotech, but I thought it would help describe why this book in particular translates so well into a tabletop role-playing game. In the series, the Earth's governments are completely broken. People only live in small, town-sized communities. So in the animation, the characters help town's members gather resources and ultimately get closer to the Invid Hive. Personally, I found it easy to come up with role-playing game ideas for the Invid Invasion. The first two books followed a strict military system, and I really wasn't sure how to create a military mission, but in Invid Invasion, it's much more open-ended. For instance, the characters are just helping towns members. Let's say they're having a problem with local gangs, or maybe an Invid Hive. You just help them out, and hijinks ensues. Let's get into the book. The book starts off with the occupational character classes, or OCCs. It only has eight pages of new OCCs. If you remembered my last episode of the Robotech Masters, there was actually 40 pages of new OCCs. But this book just gives you what is needed. The first batch of OCCs come from the Robotech Expeditionary Force, or REF. The first one is, of course, the venerable Veritech fighter pilot. In this OCC, there are three new Veritechs, and all of them are beasts. So this will be a popular OCC. Another great OCC is a Cyclone Rider. They specialize in combat with the transformable mecha known as a Cyclone. This is a motorcycle and power armor. So if you don't want to draw attention that a large mecha would, you could always bring in a Cyclone. Another new OCC is the REF Military Strategist. They specialize in intelligence and espionage. The book describes them as a jack of all trades. They get to use mecha with the exception of a destroid, and they specialize in a new type of cyclone called a saber. The last REF OCC is a bio maintenance engineer. Unfortunately, this OCC can't use mecha, so I never really played it, but you do need somebody to maintain your mecha though. The last three OCCs are civilians, but they do follow the anime series. So there's a freedom fighter, a nomad, and the last one is a non-combative citizen like Annie. Not really my thing, unless there was a skill for trolling. Let me know in the comments if you played any of these OCCs and which one's your favorite. If you haven't, do any sound fun to play? In prior books, I couldn't put together a party with diverse OCCs. For instance, there's Veritech fighter pilots, destroyed drivers, engineers, and scientists, so I didn't know how to put those together for one cohesive group for an ongoing campaign. In the Invid Invasion, the series revolves around an irregular team, so you need different types of OCCs to function well. And in fact, there's about two dozen episodes if you want to get some practical knowledge on how a team should function. Combat training works a little bit different in this book. In the anime, there were civilians that used mecha, so this needed to be accounted for. So there's standard combat training, 
if somebody has been trained by the REF, and then there's a basic training if the character has not been trained by the official REF. Basic training is far less effective than the standard. For instance, in basic training, you would only get one additional attack, but the standard would get three. It's quite a gap in performance, but it still allows players that aren't trained by the REF to contribute to the team. Let's talk about my favorite section, the sweet, sweet new mecha. But before we get there, let's talk about something I really liked about this setting. You, in fact, get to use mecha from all the earlier books. You are on an Earth ravaged by three Robotech Wars, so there's a lot of mecha around. Remember, the F-16 was introduced in the late 70s, and it's still a pretty good fighter. So, all of these mecha would be actually younger than some of the planes we have in service today. In fact, I really liked the Armies of the Southern Cross mecha because they're small and compact and could be easily hidden. The first new mecha is a Vertec riding armor. This is a motorcycle that transforms into power armor around the pilot, which is its battleoid mode. This was a very fresh and exciting mecha when I first saw it. There are three different types of cyclones. The first one is the one Scott and Ran used. It has mini missiles in the shoulders. A mini missile is new to this book. They generally have less range than the small missile, but they could do comparable damage. The second cyclone is a light cyclone that Rook uses. It sacrifices armor, but makes up for in mobility. It gets some buffs in mecha combat, but it doesn't have the internal mini missiles that the previous cyclone had. The last cyclone was Lancer's. It looked like Scott's Cyclone, but only painted purple. But what blew my middle school mind was that it had sabers that extended out of the forearms. I'm not sure why they didn't show this in the series, because it looks so damn cool. The next new mecha is the Alpha Fighter. Remember, I really liked the original VF-style Veritech, but this style is every bit as cool. It has three modes, the Jet, the Guardian, and the Battleoid, and all are pretty damn sweet. The stats for the Alpha are equally impressive. It has 300 mega damage capacity, which is 50 more than the original. But what separates it, though, from other Veritex is its missile capacity, which it could hold 60 short-range miss missiles. There is a cool Shadow Alpha variant that has a dark blue color scheme, but it has a shadow cloaking device, so Invid won't automatically detect it when Protoculture is powered on. The Beta is another Veritech fighter pilot. It has 350 mega damage capacity and huge forearm shields. It also has more missiles than the Alpha at 100, plus medium, long-range missiles, and an upgraded cannon. It's not very nimble, but it's quite the beast. The Beta can connect to the Alpha to increase its speed. Together, they have quite the arsenal. They could connect or disconnect depending on what the battle situation is. I never liked the design of the beta though. In Guardian mode, it looked kind of boxy, and in Battleoid mode, it kind of looked like the Nintendo robot. But in battle, it's quite devastating. Last up is the Vindicator, and it is called the Zentradi Buster, so it's built big. The Alpha stands about 28 feet tall, the original Veritech at 42 feet, and the Vindicator at 46 feet, so it's definitely on the juice. Is the Vindicator canon? The book states that the design comes from a five second clip in the anime. It shows a huge alpha next to a tiny little cyclone. So I'm not sure if the original animators intended this design, but you know, I really like it because it's clearly Robotech. The Invid section is much larger than the Robotech Masters and the Zentradi section, but they definitely need it. The mecha for the Invid are truly ominous and have some sweet designs. The Scout is fast and maneuverable, but doesn't have energy weapons. The arm Armored Scout has two small energy cannons. Not too powerful, but in packs, it could do some damage. The Troopers are not nearly as fast or as agile as Scouts, but they're definitely more heavy armored. The Shock Trooper actually has two large energy cannons that can do some damage. The Invid Command Unit is a big increase in power over the Shock Troopers. It has twice the mega damage capacity, and its energy cannons are devastating. The Royal Command Battleoid is a rival of any Earth's mecha. It has the same MDC as an Alpha, but it, it comes equipped with an energy shield, which is extremely important in Palladium combat. It's also the only Invid to come equipped with missiles. 
The back of the book provides good information that can help craft an exciting adventure. You're given floor plans to an invid hive, which I've used many times. They also detail a genesis pit and give you stats for dinosaurs. The section I really liked was on invid experimentation. Remember the episode called Higher Gun? where it had a character who was being experimented on by the Invid. Now they give you tables for these experimentations. You can get some cool buffs like regeneration, robot arms, or even a whole entire robot body. You'll also need to roll on another chart for penalties, and they're always bad. Also, if the parts break down, only the Invid could fix them, and they're not accepting HMOs. Thank you for watching this episode. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Robotech book is and why. Please give me a like because it will tell YouTube you like what you saw. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you'll be notified when the next adventure is ready. And I'll see everybody on the next Dungeon Crawl.